Happy Jewish American Heritage Month. There are a few really important dates for Jewish people that happen in May. One of them is today. Israeli Holocaust Remembrance Day, also known as Yom HaShoah. And to mark this date today, I'm gonna to take you to two places in Philadelphia that commemorate the Holocaust. These are places you may not know exist, and if you do know about them, maybe you haven't visited them in a while or ever. Hi! How are you? Good to see you again. Hello. Esther Kutash. And I'm the executive director of the Philadelphia Holocaust Remembrance Foundation. We operate and program the Horvitz Wasserman Holocaust Memorial Plaza where we are today. The plaza is situated on a triangular piece of land in Center City, Philadelphia at 16th Street and the Ben Franklin Parkway, which is one of the city's main roads between the Art Museum and City Hall. We are standing at the site of the oldest public Holocaust monument in the United States. This uh, statue next to me was erected by Holocaust survivors in 1964. And ever since then, this site became a sacred place where families of people who uh, passed, as well as who survived, came here to commemorate the Holocaust annually. Nathan Rappaport, who is the sculptor, has a lot of work throughout New York, Israel, as well as Europe. So you might recognize his work, but actually this specific statue is only exists in a single form and it's here. It represents the struggle and the resilience of the Jewish community. Kutach says having a monument in downtown Philadelphia to commemorate the Holocaust is a big deal. In the mid-1950s, the local Holocaust survivor community, together with other Jewish community leaders, began a negotiation process with the city of Philadelphia to talk about creating a community site in the city to remember the Holocaust. And at the same time, they also contacted Nathan Rappaport, who by then was a quite well-known artist throughout Europe. So while Nathan was working on the statue back in Europe, Europe, the local Jewish community was negotiating with the city of Philadelphia where to place the sculpture. We are standing on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. This is a, a mile long road from uh, City Hall to the Philadelphia Museum of Art and this is probably our most prominent boulevard in the city. And when you walk the parkway you will notice that the country's flags are displayed in alphabetical order but Israel's flag, the Star of David, is actually out of order. It was moved here at the request of the local Jewish community to be situated next to the Holocaust Memorial. Up until 2018, the only thing on the corner was Rappaport's commemorative Holocaust statue. In 2018, it was renovated into an inviting plaza where people could come and sit and learn about the Holocaust from additional art and artifacts. So you will see on the six pillars that, for example, we are juxtaposing here, com comparing here uh, human equality, which is the most important piece of our Declaration of Independence, with the concept of master race from the Nazis. And we're doing this throughout these six pillars, so we are also comparing American democracy with the totalitarianism. And what we are really underscoring here is how if we stay true to our American values here, then something like the Holocaust will not happen here. But she says stats on anti-Semitic incidents are not encouraging. Among the disturbing stats that Esther showed me were these stats from the ADL, in which you can see a steady increase since 2014 to 2023. And then in 2023, you can see that anti-Semitic incidents just skyrocketed. I want to also bring your attention to the train tracks that we have embedded here in the paving of the plaza. These train tracks are from the original railroad that led to Treblinka. After Auschwitz, Treblinka had the highest number of victims of the Holocaust with over 800,000 people who died in this extermination camp. We wanted to send a strong reminder about the systemic and efficient way that mass murder was happening in which deportations and using the existing railroad system took a huge part. Kutash points out there's a lot of symbolism built into the new plaza design. The trees in the back symbolize the resistance movement that happened during the Holocaust. It also is a reminder about the people who were hiding in the forest because they did not want to be deported. So during the Holocaust, especially during the war years, there were hundreds of thousands of people who lived in forests throughout Europe. 
This tree has a very special story. It comes originally from Theresienstadt. Children who were imprisoned in that camp, together with a teacher, her name was Irma, planted a tree, understanding that they may never see it mature. They did this during Tu Bishvat, which is our Jewish holiday for nature. So these children who were surviving these horrible circumstances in this camp nurtured this tree, and the tree grew. Unfortunately, they were all deported to Auschwitz where they died, but the teacher lived to tell their story. And several decades later, Irma, the teacher, went back to Terezin and found the tree, and some saplings were taken from that tree and planted in some significant locations. So we are super fortunate to have one of those trees be here at the Holocaust Memorial Plaza in Philadelphia. She says visitors can learn more about each site on the plaza through an app developed in partnership with the USC Shoah Foundation called USC Shoah iWalk. You can learn about each one of these installations. You can learn about its historical context. You will see historical photographs and you will also hear Holocaust survivor testimony. All right, the other place that I want to show you on this Holocaust Remembrance Day is about a half hour or so away. So let's head there now. Okay, we're here. There used to be a Holocaust museum inside the Klein Life Center, but apparently during the pandemic they moved. Now they're in a synagogue about 20 minutes away from here, so we're heading there now. Okay, now I'm here for real, a different part of town. This museum is such a well-kept secret that I could barely find it. Hi, my name is Chuck Feldman and I'm the president of the board of directors of the Holocaust Awareness Museum and Education Center. Come on in. Hello. This is my wife, Paula Weiss. What is a very common refrain about the Holocaust is never again, what we say about Holocaust education is never enough. Our museum was founded by the late Yaakov and Sheila Riz, and he put it into his basement in 1961. It's located in suburban Philadelphia at Congregation Knesset Israel in Elkins Park, with all authentic artifacts donated or on loan from area Holocaust survivor families. Here we have different papers from some of our survivors, and we believe that our museum is literally the oldest Holocaust museum in America. This flag flew above the town hall in Nuremberg. And the vice president of our organization, Don Wittenberg, his father, as an American GI, helped to liberate Nuremberg and won the coin toss or the raffle afterwards to get the flag. But this is literally the flag that flew above the town hall in Nuremberg where all of the Nuremberg laws were passed. And the signatures on there are from his American combat colleagues. That's why they have it crumpled like that so you can't so you can't see the swastika. But Feldman says the most important mission of the museum is not seen here, but in classrooms where their survivors tell their firsthand witness accounts of the Holocaust atrocities. Ruth Hartz, one of our survivors who is still with us, uh, she was a hidden child and this was her, her doll. Dave Tuck was in Auschwitz. He amazingly did hundreds and hundreds of programs and reached tens of thousands of young people. Kurt Herman was part of the uh, kinder transport. But the survivors are aging, and Feldman tells students this generation will be the last to hear directly from a Holocaust survivor. And some of our survivors, when they hear about anti-Semitic incidents occurring, whether it's in Europe or in the United States, are quite concerned. This whole topic can be very discouraging, but Chuck's wife Paula does have a positive spin. I'm heartened by the number of people who are very vocally speaking out against anti-Semitism, Jews, non-Jews, people on the right, people on the left, and I see a stark difference between what's happening here today and the 1930s in Germany where people did not speak out. This is why our work continues to be even more important today. Especially German Jews who felt, well, we're German first, and we fought in World War I, we're part of society, nothing will happen to us, and could not have been more surprised when the German government did not feel that same way about them. Oh my gosh, I didn't notice that the kidnap posters were here at the entrance to the synagogue when I first walked in. 